New York City. For many, it's a city of dreams, tall buildings, financial institutions, and more people than a single person could meet in one lifetime. On the outside, it's a fantastic place, filled to the brim with opportunity. The reality, however, is much more different. The city is divided into several boroughs and sub-communities, like Harlem, which is where today's story originates. From East Harlem to Sugar Hill, more than two dozen youth gangs claim territory and pull triggers, even over the pettiest rivalries. These are not the Los Angeles-style gangs, such as the Bloods and the Crips that most people are used to hearing about. Instead, they're crews of local kids from the same block or clusters of block. Representing their turf often comes down to street corner clashes, which end in the worst of ways. Harlem residents tell stories of being caught in gun battles and of seeing crowds of teens running down a block with sticks, bats, shovels, and of being too intimidated to even walk to the corner of the streets that they live on and it's been that way for longer than a decade. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one of these crews that's been causing chaos in the streets in New York City. So without further ado, let's go. Uh, all kinds of takedowns all over town. Now residents here in these housing developments have been terrorized by these gangs, and what they do is they each have their own little turf. The traditional gangs that we've heard about in the past, like the Bloods and the Crips, are not really what the authorities are seeing here operating on the streets of New York City. They post these videos online, they make a name for themselves, and then they go to war with other people, and very young ages too, some of them, uh, as young as 13 and 14, so that's a concern. The police department wants to get a handle on this, especially as the summer is beginning. The 32 precinct is one area that has seen the biggest uptick in gun violence in Harlem. NYPD stats show that this precinct has seen a 60% increase in shootings this year over last year. I would feel more safe for me and my clients that we would have a little more police uh, presence here. The concerns is one of these uh, bullets like we see in the city so many times actually striking, you know, uh, patrons. In the area, there's a lot of, you know, this gang violence. In this neighborhood, the 32nd Precinct, so far this year, there have been 31 shooting incidents compared to 19 the same time last year. That's a 63% increase. The biggest concerning thing is this is happening within a block of uh, a New York City police precinct. From August 9th to October 10th, Police say there have been at least six shootings, all happening right here on 125th Street. In early October of 2022, a video rapidly gained traction online showcasing a teacher and two high school students dancing to a rap song. The 19 second clip set in a classroom captures the trio performing a choreographed routine of Naughty Bop. Naughty, Naughty Bopping, punching my hips. No, no, no. Like, come here, gotta do it like this. Don't, don't drop my the song in the video, Naughty Bop, became a viral TikTok trend. Many users on TikTok create dance challenge videos with young people and sometimes adults performing the song's dance moves. While this is a common trend on TikTok, Naughty Bop stands out for its controversial connection to a real life tragedy. On the afternoon of July 9th, 14 year old Ethan Reyes, known in Harlem as Naughty Osama, was hanging out with his crew at the 137th Street City College subway station when he saw a 15 year old named Kelvin Martinez. Now, these two are basically still babies, but in the streets of New York, even the youngins be wildin', and Martinez was considered an op. Upon spotting Martinez, Naughty and his homies began to pursue him, ultimately cornering him. In an act of aggression, Naughty assaulted Martinez with a broom. In self-defense, Martinez swung a knife at Naughty, hitting him in the hip. Naughty would not survive the incident. A 14-year-old boy has died after being stabbed on the platform of a one train in Hamilton Heights. Police say it happened after some kind of altercation and his attacker is still on the run. Another young life lost in what neighbors are calling a senseless act of violence. Too much and too often. Police say the 14-year-old victim was on the northbound platform inside the 137th Street City College train station when he was stabbed once in the abdomen. One witness who didn't want to show his face on camera for fear of retaliation says three teenage girls were trying to rob the victim when things escalated. They were girls. There were three girls. There was one with the green that I, that's the one that did the stabbing. And there were two young kids. 
maybe like 13 or 14 too. They wanted to take his phone. EMS arrived quickly, but it was too late. When they were bringing him up, he was dead. His head fell back, his eyes would roll back to the white and purple. His lips were purple, purple. He was dead. So far, there have been no arrests, but police say they do have an idea of who they're looking for. Well, there are mourners from here in Hamilton Heights all the way up to Yonkers, wondering why a 14-year-old had to lose his life after an argument. Friends and neighbors left candles and flowers Monday night outside the Yonkers home of 14-year-old Ethan Reyes. The teen was stabbed to death over the weekend during an altercation on a subway platform in the Hamilton Heights section of Manhattan. Marisol is one of Ethan's former classmates. He was way too young, I feel like. He had a lot going for him. A 14 year old victim gone. Shockwaves are spreading at this hour at the news that a Yonkers teenager has been killed during a subway fight in the city. This is the Harlem train station where police say 14 year old Ethan Reyes of Yonkers was stabbed to death by another teen. Investigators say an argument between the two began on the street at around 3 p.m. on Saturday and continued into the train station. A little more than a half hour later, Reyes, who lived here on Young Avenue in Yonkers, was pronounced dead at a Manhattan hospital. Those who live in this quiet Yonkers neighborhood say that they are shocked and saddened by the news of the teenager's death. Some even telling me that they have fears for their own children. It just makes me very sad that I that something somebody so young with so much life is gone. The next day, 15-year-old Kelvin Martinez was arrested and charged with second-degree murder, which was later reduced to first-degree manslaughter. Now to a developing story. A suspect involved in the murder of a Yonkers teenager has now been identified. Last weekend, 14-year-old Ethan Reyes was found dead on a train platform in a North Harlem subway station with a stab wound to his stomach. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead 30 minutes later. The Manhattan DA's office has now identified 15-year-old Kelvin Martinez as the person suspected of stabbing Reyes and say the two are part of rival gangs. Investigators say Martinez was, cons was cornered by Reyes and a friend, and they started beating him with a broomstick. Police say it was at that, that point that Martinez stabbed Reyes in the stomach. Martinez taken into custody by police 35 blocks from the subway station. He's now being charged with manslaughter in the first degree. A 15-year-old boy has been charged with killing another teen on a subway platform yesterday. Condolences are pouring in as loved ones leave flowers at the doorstep of slain teen Ethan Reyes. Residents in his quiet Yonkers neighborhood tell us the family only moved to the block in recent months. Police say on Saturday there was some sort of dispute on the street that trickled into the 137th Street City College train station. It's deeply saddening and because it's tragic. The 15-year-old suspect is not being named, but authorities say he was caught near 173rd Street and Broadway with a hip injury and bleeding from the back and abdomen. Investigators were able to locate a knife and what they believe to be a broomstick that were used in the violent crime. He's now being charged with murder and criminal possession of a weapon. On Sunday, Mayor Eric Adams was out meeting neighbors and letting them know he's working to keep them safe. One strap hanger says she'd like to see more officers on foot patrol. You always have to keep keenly aware of what's going on, especially now during this climate, especially now with the youth around here. They're angry. They're mad. Police believe they have the person responsible in custody and are not looking for any other suspects. Authorities say this was not a random attack and that the victim and the assailant both knew each other. In October, all charges against Kelvin Martinez were dropped as there was insufficient evidence to refute his claim of self-defense. Nadia Osama, an aspiring drill rapper known for his music's emphasis on street violence, often collaborated with his older brother, Didi Osama, whose real name is David Reyes. Their songs depicted gang rivalries and conflicts through the use of local references, acronyms, and slang. Dead Ops, a song released shortly after Naughty's death, serves as a prime example. Let's have a listen. I'm a demon, all I do is click for 80 the devil, I'ma let it rip. See, yeah, I had died, nobody gon' slime. It get messy, try to run up, hit him in his back. Spin the A and we lookin' for nests, I bottom my god, I set him to his best. Spin A, don't try to catch me a G. According to the Manhattan District Attorney, both Naughty 
and Martinez were associated with rival gangs, further illuminating the complex dynamics behind their tragic encounter. But in order to understand how these kids ended up in that subway station, we need to go back in time just a little bit. David Reyes, now recognized as D.D. Osama, grew up in Harlem, New York with his five siblings, a sister and four brothers. Two of these brothers were particularly influential in shaping who he is today. Among them were Ethan, later known as Nadi Osama, and his elder brother, J. Star Bala. It's just the three of y'all? It's, nah, it's six of us. Okay, oh wow. Yeah, it's five boys, but one girl. Dang, that's crazy. Young, she's the youngest or? She's she the, the second oldest. She okay. Right, yeah, she ran to me. Okay, okay. And it seems like I always gotta, I always gotta make sure everybody else is, everything cope aesthetic, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't have nobody losing it, you know, losing it. Yeah. Nadi was a big loss for us, you feel me? Yeah. It was different, a different bar. To fully comprehend Didi Osama and Nadi Osama's upbringing, it's important to grasp the impact that Nadi had on him. Even though Didi Osama was the older brother to Nadi, when it came time to choose a rap name, Nadi's influence became apparent. So I mean, I got, I got, I personally got it off Nadi. I said Nadi, I don't know how he got that, gangster. Mm. I personally got it off my little brother. Although they were a year apart in age, the two were practically inseparable, like twins, and did everything together. They frequently moved between different residences in Harlem during their childhood. Despite the constant moving, Sugar Hill always felt like home to them and it was here that they began to establish their reputation. Their mother worked in the real estate sector, striving to support her children while their father wasn't in the picture at all. They did, however, have a stepfather who attempted to take on the fatherly role. Regardless, they always had one another and shared a mutual passion for rapping. Long before any of them ever set foot in a recording booth though, they had already endured the hardship of growing up in a tough neighborhood. Man, so we all know you all from Harlem, right? Yeah. For the people that don't know, what, what part of Harlem are you from? Harlem, uh, Sugar Got you, got you. And for the, I, I know I got a lot of subscribers from like Australia or all over. Uh, what's your experience with, with, with Sugar Hill? What was it like for you growing up out here? Rough. Yeah. Yeah, like, things ain't really had a lot, but made a count though, for sure, like. And I wasn't really, like, I am just let you ask the questions, but. Yeah. It was rough, but for me, I got through it. What you were seeing outside? A lot. I was seeing a lot outside. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of bush. Me and the bro was bugging. Yeah. Just bugging when he was younger. Bugging. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Oh. Is, is, is that one of the positive memories you have? Right. Yeah. 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 I usually know most places in New York, but like Sugar Hill is so new to me. Like I've never heard of that in my life. For someone who's never ever been there, like what is it actually like? Chilling in the park, chilling, regular shit, gangster. It's rough, and in between, it's, it's not a lot in there, gangster. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot, but. When Dee Dee and Nadi were entering their teenage years, they had already taken to the street. At merely 12 and 13 years old, they were in the streets of Sugar Hill, putting in work all while repping a local gang known as OY. There's a PSA for everybody that suck my Every two shot, God. Every two shot. Every up shot. Real light. Oh, why is a gang allegedly founded by a man named Country Kane, who was known by some as a prominent drug dealer. 
At one time, he was connected to almost every rapper, hailing from Harlem, and coined the phrase, Sugar Hill Get the Money, which you may have heard before and can still hear today in multiple references in rap. Yeah, Unfortunately, Country K didn't live to witness the evolution of Sugar Hill within the drill scene it now participates in. In 2018, on a Sunday morning at around 2 a.m., he was dining at a chicken joint when a hooded assailant entered and shot him in the head. Law enforcement officials claim that the murder remains unsolved to this day. Or perhaps the streets have already handed out their own justice. Either way, this is just one tragic incident among many, fueling numerous ongoing conflicts in Harlem and in the Bronx, perpetuating an endless cycle of vengeance and animosity. Didi and Adi were raised in this atmosphere, and much like their peers, they became numb to the repercussions of such a lifestyle at an early age until they encountered their consequences firsthand. Music soon became their emotional outlet. Didi, Nadi, and J Star Abala all began their rap careers in a makeshift studio at their grandmother's residence. I'm not gonna lie, when I first like tried music, I was like 12. Yeah, I was there like 12, 13, gangster. Yeah, my son Nadi was doing music. I was just like, oh no, yeah, my son tough kicks. So I'm about to hop in the booth. Feel me? I hopped in the booth. I was trash. I was, <laughs> feel me? I wasn't even. I'm like, nah, I'm, I got this shit high. I can't even rap. Like, like I feel me? I was young, so I ain't, feel me? I ain't really know a lot of words to like, what to, for me, so. Gangsta. But like, it was really like, first time yeah i was like 12 gangsta. Mm. And, and, and what what was going on around your life that made you say to yourself yo you know uh, let me try this music stuff let me try to actually pursue it and take it serious really i my brothers like really like my heart naughty my turn my soul yeah he's your younger brother or, yeah, right? yeah my younger brother got you my heart and Jay Star really. Yeah. Yeah. So he he started rapping before you or you started rapping? Yeah, Naughty and Jay Star started rapping before me. They started been uploading, but like Naughty ain't really upload like my son Naughty uploaded his first song before me, like that long ago too, I remember. And he, but like it was like, nah, I wanna rap with y'all like yeah. we all gonna go out, like all just gonna go out. J Star Bala, their older brother, was the first one out of the three to begin rapping, and he started his journey by releasing music in 2020, though he didn't experience any significant breakthroughs. Cause I see you rapping. Were you always rapping before, or did they kind of? I've been rapping for for a few years now. Rapping okay. for like three years now. Like really okay. taking it serious, like three four years. Got you, got you. And and what got you involved in um doing music? Like situations, you know the vibes, bro. Be going through for real, man. Mm -hmm. They're real out there. Yeah. It does it serve? Does the music serve as like a therapy for y'all? Yeah. You took the words right out my mouth, bro. Like, no cap. That's therapy for real, for real. No mm -hmm. However, this served as motivation for Didi and Nadi as they observed their older brother and gleaned insights into the industry. Around this time, two other emerging names were E Dot Baby and Sugar Hill D Dot. E Dot Baby had already started to gain recognition online as a young artist, attracting a sizable number of views way before Nadi, D Dot, or Didi were rapping. He was a trailblazer for the younger generation, possessing a certain level of influence over them. 
Witnessing his success only intensified Didi and Nadi's desire to enter the recording booth, and Eda Baby reciprocated their admiration by including them in some of his music videos before any of them gained their own fame. Soon after, Nadi began recording rap songs, with Didi joining him in the endeavor. From the outset, they declared their intention to challenge everyone. Despite their youth, the duo projected a mature demeanor in their music, frequently taunting their adversaries by mocking the demise of their rivals. I said, get out that way. You or your homie get shot in your face. Everything's for Naughty, though. I know the vibes. The duo were really like evil twins. The brothers were determined to dominate everything that stood in their way. Even though they were just youngsters, they were prepared to confront anybody, anytime, anywhere. No hurdle was about to deter these two. When they collaborated on songs, their chemistry was palpable and unfiltered. In tracks like Dead Op, they exhibited aggression and brazenly engaged in provocative banter. Moreover, they embraced the perilous way of life they were living as youngsters striving to rise to the top. In that same track, Nadi makes a statement that Didi Osama later corroborated in an interview regarding their experiences in their trenches. Like you said, he was younger than you before. When, when growing up, was y'all, was y'all close? Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. For, dear. for the people that didn't know him, you know, uh, what, what kind of person was he? Oh, I was a demon, like, so, like, I was a demon. Mm-hmm. So was on that. Mm-hmm. But I... Yeah. Once they all decided it was time to take rap seriously, they hit the game hard and it came with some serious consequences. Nadi Osama dropped a song titled What You Wanna Do, where he took shots at another New York rapper named K-Flock in his set Sad Side DOA with these lyrics right here. Nadi also seemed to claim a body in that verse as well. Let's listen one more time. Now I did look into it, and it does seem that a dude from Southside did get smoked named J-Rip. Check this out. New at 5, we're hearing from the families of two teens shot and killed in the Bronx. Sunday, a 13-year-old died too, shot walking down 187th Street. Surveillance shows Jerron Elliott in red pants. Shots zing through the air. Within seconds, he scrambles inside a restaurant. A crowd surrounds him. Police say he got shot in the ankle and chest. It hurts me a lot, you know, that he was a nice kid. He was never a troublemaker. And then suddenly this happened to him. Angie's one of the people who lit a candle in his memory in front of his Southern Boulevard building. Police think that his death is gang related. By phone, his mother called for peace and told me just how much she loves her son. Just like Ramon's mom. They want to know why this happened, left wondering. Are they safe? We also found out from the family of the 13 year old that today around seven o'clock, they say they're going to gather with his friends to remember him, the boy they all loved. Developing now a teenager targeted in a shooting in the Bronx, the shooting brazen. It happened during the day and just outside of a restaurant on 187th Street in the Belmont section of the Bronx. And cops say he was the target. News 4's Adam Harding has new information about the victim. Adam. And Gilma, police here at the 4A precinct in the Bronx behind us still investigating this deadly shooting. Investigators have yet to find whoever pulled the trigger. Neighbors in that community not far from this precinct terrified. Surveillance video from East 187th Street in the Bronx showing the frantic aftermath just after three Sunday afternoon. An ambulance arriving on scene to transport a 13 year old who just been shot. He died within the hour. I heard about eight rounds. And I came outside about 10 minutes later and seen chaos. Evidence markers mapping out the deadly shooting, shell casings lining this Belmont neighborhood. The shots were fired like right between here. And that's when I heard the first one. Louis Ricardo called 911. And all of a sudden, I hear the gunshot, but I thought it was a firecracker. Well, but then when I look again to see who blew it, that's when I heard the second shot, and that's when I went to the floor. The police chief late Sunday confirming the teen was the intended target. This is not the first one I heard since I've been in this neighborhood. Neighbors left shaken by another case of gun violence. Yeah, I don't feel safe no more. I don't feel safe. 
The investigation tonight continues again. Gilma, investigators have yet to announce any arrests in this deadly shooting or how many shooters there may have been involved. We saw a large crowd in that surveillance video, but police still investigating. If you know anything about this shooting, police want to hear from you. So did Nadi take out J-Rip? Well, the only evidence that was released was a photo of the car with the guy hanging out of it wearing a red or burgundy jacket. Now, a simple Google search of Nadi Osama did pop up this picture of him in a red jacket, but is this conclusive evidence? Nah, but he did seem to claim the body in that verse. To deal with. I know I can't know. They got smoked so they got the way. Either way, J Rib's murder is still an unsolved case till this day. What this song did was make it clear that Nadi and his crew were ready for smoke with anybody in the city, especially Savside and K Flock. At the time, K Flock was gaining immense popularity and could be considered one of the most prominent rappers that was emerging from New York. However, this didn't deter a 14 year old from mocking him. In their song Dead Ops, they also dissed the YG saying he could get shot if he hopped like a bunny, which is a reference to YG's member D Thang's song Bunny Hop. Most of my ops stay folded. Like what? Like what did y'all do? Jellies pull up, leaky, he clutch, bunny hopping with the two. Most of my ops stay folded. Like what did y'all do? Jellies pull up, leaky, he clutch, bunny hopping with the two. We said penny, no, we don't send money. He didn't get shot, he hop like a bunny. Even if you're unfamiliar with the YGs, you might recognize some of their most famous rappers, like D Thing. DD Naughty and Sugar Hill D Dot were all rising stars in their own right, even dubbing themselves the three young demons of Sugar Hill. Three, bro, we still, Yo, we still the three and three demons. demons. I'm gonna yeah, we still, yeah, still yeah, the three demons. Naughty still, with us, still with us. Three demons still. Their shocking youth and wild behavior drew people's attention and their views quickly reached 100,000 in just three days. As if feuding with K-Flock and D-Thang wasn't enough, they also had disagreements with their group called 41. This group wasn't a gang, but instead it was a collective of rappers. The conflict arose when 41 joined forces with a man named Blockwork, who was part of the same organization, oh why, that Didi and Naughty were a part of. Blockwork was rumored to be a snitch. To address the situation, Naughty and Didi created a song titled 41K, which criticized 41 for associating with a known snitch like Blockwork. Like 41K, y'all jacking the snitches? Okay, y'all gonna get stitches. Call them out too when it's top for the mission. Spit to the A trying to see who we click. In the same track, they also insulted an OG affiliate named Smelly, who was real close with another New York rapper that I'm sure some of y'all are familiar with, Lil TJ. I'm a demon and I throw a play. Smelly a bitch, y'all pull for a play. Tragically, 17-year-old Smelly was killed in a dispute over a bite, suffering 14 stab wounds to the chest, and it was all caught on video. However, I won't show it here, but I will roll the news footage about what happened. When you watch that video, it is just awful and shocking. Now that teenager was rushed to the hospital. He is recovering at home, but police say this is where he was attacked on University Avenue. This is very busy, high traffic, both foot and road, shops on one side, bus stops on both sides, and still this boy was stabbed in the middle of the day. Surveillance video shows a 15-year-old boy on a scooter at the corner of West 179th Street and University when a man police say approaches him just before 3 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon two weeks ago. He gives a threatening gesture, enough for the victim to slightly jerk back, and then you see it, the knife that individual is holding. Wow. 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 It was clearly shock and disgust as they went about their daily routines. This is insane. Yeah, it can happen anyway. And I work up here for 231st. This is just horrible. It doesn't matter if it's day or night. This, these things happen, then something has to get done about it. The song 41K remained unreleased at the time it was recorded. Now, they also dissed another one of their ops named Rod G's in the song. Yo, go keep doing that. Go do them like volume of slip in the whip. Yo, go keep doing that. While getting into an Uber to go to a studio session, Rod G's was killed at a red light. Two kids on scooters rolled up and shot him in the back seat, killing him instantly. The mother of this, a teenager, telling us that she moved him and his two siblings um, from Puerto Rico here to the Bronx almost 13 years ago for a better life. Never did she expect something like this to happen.
She's devastated. They killed their son. Single mother Yvonne Medrano is inconsolable. The Bronx woman is now mourning the loss of her 16 year old son, Ramon Gil Medrano, her older son, translated for her. When she saw him, he looked like he was asleep. Everything was too late. It was too late. Around 11.30 Sunday night by the corner of East 178th Street and Webster Avenue in the Bronx, police say two men pulled scooters up next to a cab Medrano was taking to a recording studio. They then shot him in his head and chest, killing him. I pinched myself so many times to see if this is reality, you know, this is reality. 16, he ain't lived life yet. You know what I mean? He never lived life. Police telling us they have yet to make any arrests. Before the song Dissing These People came out, Nadi Osama will find himself in the same situation, meeting the same fate as many of the people he mocked when him and his homies attempted to jump Kelvin Martinez, resulting in Nadi receiving that fatal stab wound to the abdomen. Almost as soon as it happened, his ops started to hop on IG and dissing. I could never, ever, ever lie. Ever, ever. Can't be in no train station like that stupid Nadi, you heard? No transportation, you heard? Take, say no to no transportation. Where to my mother? You get poked up in the train station, bro. Come on, bro. How you go all like that? That's wild because y'all remember, this kid was only 14 years old. Regardless of how he was acting, he was still just a kid. Nadi's passing had a profound effect on the entire Sugar Hill community, particularly on his brothers DD and J-Star. Upon learning about their brother's death, Didi declared that he no longer had the desire to rap. However, understanding the significance of his music to Nadi, Didi felt compelled to continue, ensuring that his brother's legacy lived on. You know, ever since his passing, you you just stopped kind of caring about like being a rapper, or, like being famous. Like you got like that. I don't care about it. Gotta do it. For me, I gotta do it for bro. But it's just that it don't phase me like money, money to. Fame, all of this shit don't face me. You don't feel like it's how it's supposed to feel, okay? So I'm supposed to feel good about it. I ain't supposed to be with bro. It's not with bro, so I don't feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Dee Dee later gave an interview in which he disclosed that he was with Naughty shortly before he was tragically killed. Where were you when you when you heard the news of, of what took place with him? I, I was, I, I'm gonna tell you, I was yeah. with him. Yeah. And then, and then, we was walking. He was on, right? He was walking. We told him, like, yo, bro, why we walking over here? We out over there, bro. Because we, we walking down south. We walking down the hill. Like, yeah. yo, bro. Not down there, but like down. I ain't right? down blocks. Like, yo, bro, we out, I right? out up here, over here. Man, bro, we, bro, man. My son was harder, bro. Man, my son was harder, but it was like, all right, bro, going back to the block, bro. It was like, all right. My heart was, when I was with him, he was good, word up, bro, like, yeah. he was good. Bro, I left, go to the block, call me, say, yo, now he got stabbed, block. I said, like, what? Like, I was just with him. Yeah. Like, that's why I was sad. Like, bro, still thinking, like, what if I stayed? Like, if I was really, if I just stayed with him no time. It's unfortunate that Didi Osama's career experienced a surge after his brother's tragic death. His fan base grew, and suddenly the spotlight was all on him. In the rap industry, negativity and street activity often fuel popularity. So it's disheartening that it took his brother's passing to accelerate his exposure to a larger audience. While Didi Osama likely would have achieved success eventually, it's a dark and unsettling reality that such a devastating event is what contributed to his rapid rise. Oh no, just right now, I don't really care about the like, God, it's cool, like to like fire you know, without my sonati for me. I already know I would have loved this off the first 100K follower I had. I would have been hyped with me and my Sonati, but I wasn't even smiling when I saw that 100K. 
my 500k, 900k, all right. Mm. Uh, I think that's what it is for me. Like, the way I see it, like, God really just cursed me, gave me a gift at the same time, but curse up for me. DD Osama would release two songs dedicated to his slain little bro. One of those songs was Letter to Naughty. It ain't over, Naughty. I'm a deuce for you and mommy. Told to be strong. Yeah, I got a Basamo and I'm on the streets. Yeah, I'm telling a hottie like, I lost Naughty. I lost myself. and no damn I can hear you. Yeah, this shit I roll out. It's gonna die because they talk your name. I just hope that it ain't why I'm ready to flame. Like, I just got in my boat. Boat died. I ain't want to make music. Long live Naughty for him. I'm a boom. If you talk on his name, we go ruthless. Like, a lot of niggas don't know this pain. Diddy also collaborated on a group track titled E4N, which stands for Everything for Naughty. He worked with his brother Jay Star Abala and their crew to create this song. It's kind of like a tribute. Everything for Naughty, that's just how I'm stuck. Like, like, if we're talking, no bro, we gon' stretch. Like, how about the V face shot, we gon' drench him. Like, all the old day outside my section. Yo, Star told Naughty to stay out the streets. Wow, it's not grabbing me. Wait, when all the bro, we always gon' get. Wait, go to my IP and finish the squeal. Like, ever 14, what the f going on? I'm going to bro. If you met your brother, you feel my pain. Like, I'll be not if I am on the I got your little bra, I'm carrying it. Yeah, this shit never stop. We put off your gang. Like, this shit the hardest. When I saw you lay down, I felt hard. Whole body went up, thinking where it just started. Hey, if you took it on night, it was shot to your chest. Now you eat me to your gut. Whole lot of killers behind me. Who beat it, you know you beside me. I'm a young get crazy. Walk down gang, leave a lazy. Look at my brother, that really hurt him. You took it on night, he get pulled in his shirt. Ever since then, Didi has been unwavering and honoring his little brother, always putting everything for Naughty first and keeping his memory alive. The whole Sugar Hill crew stands united in defending Naughty's name against any disrespect. Naughty had earned the respect of his peers at a very young age, and it's difficult to imagine the heights that he would have reached if his life hadn't have been cut short. Unfortunately, the opposing factions were not sympathetic to his loss. They saw this as their chance to capitalize on the situation that tarnished Naughty's reputation, and that's when Kyle Rich released his diss track, Naughty Bop, which we listened to earlier in the video. Another individual who participated in this faithful trend was Dougie B, who was worth mentioning because he's closely affiliated with K-Flock. Didi Osama has had ongoing disputes with K-Flock and Sevside, even going as far as to tearing down his posters and openly stating this. Hey. Took down that K Flock poster. You said what? Took down that K Flock poster. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had put it next to y'all area. Yeah, I don't know what's <laughs> <laughs> up. I don't know what's up. Didi has also targeted Flock and his crew, Sev Side, in his songs, calling them out by name and expressing disdain for them. One of these diss tracks is 40s and 9s, which is a collaboration between Didi Osama and Sugar Hill Dida. Tensions were escalating and conflicts intensified, particularly when Naughty's name was mentioned. When the news broke that rival Maddie G had overdosed and passed away, the Sugar Hill crew saw it as their opportunity to get some retribution. Didi Osama and Sugar Hill D Dot went live on social media, taunting and celebrating Maddie G's death, acting as if it was a joyful occasion. Um, Maddie G! Is yeah. that smoking Maddie G's ass back? Better guy, there's no one up there that. Think that Maddie G's he gave me smack. Smoking Maddie, I'm bringing me dad can go out like Maddie go on to the Maddie! <laughs> It's astonishing how these kids have become so desensitized to such grave situations, treating them like a game. This kind of negative energy always has consequences, and nobody wins when it comes to gangs and disrespecting people. However, just as Dee Dee was reveling in Maddie G's supposed demise, a twist occurred. Maddie G turned out to be alive and it faked his passing. 
he responded by posting a video of himself doing a naughty bop and disrespecting D.D. Osama's deceased friend, E. Dot Baby. At that moment, Maddie G was embracing his villainous persona and playing an incredibly risky game with his life. R.I.P. E. Dot Baby. Smoking you. Smoking your pack. Where my mother? I got the knife for the party. I said, Eat our baby. Smoking on Eat our. I'm twitching. I'm twitching. I'm twitching. I'm twitching. TDO Sam needs to get back. Stop making music. I can't breathe, bro. Eat our baby's punch around. Initially, there were suspicions surrounding Eat our baby's passing, but when known figures in New York began posting about the loss, the reality really started to set in. Reportedly, he died baby, decided to end his own life due to the burden of the challenges that he faced. Life on the streets can be harsh and unforgiving. Someone claiming to be his niece had a conversation in which she mentioned that his girlfriend allegedly took his jewelry and weapon before leaving him. This added even more mystery to his passing. In time, his girlfriend did respond though, addressing the rumors and defending herself against the accusations. She explained that his jewelry was secured in a safe and she said that she had only moved the weapon to avoid leaving it unattended in her house. She also said that she was trying to get him to the hospital at the time that he died. The details behind E. Dot Baby's passing are still very much unclear. Despite the tragic circumstances, Maddie G remained relentless in his antics. He released an extremely offensive track called Naughty Dotty, in which he mocked the violent incident involving Naughty and even went as far as to burn and stomp on a picture of him. Look, even as early as three weeks ago, there were still diss songs coming out with people throwing disrespect on Naughty's name. Look at this video from Trav Money Drowsy B and the man responsible for Naughty's death, K. Dot Two Times, better known as Kelvin Martinez. Okay, Keen An immense amount of pain and loss has resulted from the ongoing feud between these young individuals. It seems they are caught up in the environment that shaped them, showing little concern for the consequences of their actions. Since Naughty's passing, Didi Osama has stepped up his game, releasing hit after hit. He's been working tirelessly and grinding, aiming to make Naughty proud. With his current trajectory, he's on track to make a significant impact on the hip-hop industry, especially the drill movement in New York. Major labels such as Sony have already taken notice of D.D. Osama's potential and have invited him to meetings ready to discuss lucrative deals about his career. In fact, he recently inked a deal with Alamo Records along with his brother J. Star Bala. This is all without even dropping a full-length project yet. Since then, he's moved his mom into a new home where his family can hopefully escape the violence. Now, he's selling out his own shows, got a co-sign from Drake, and did some modeling for his clothing line too, and he's working with mainstream artists. Plus, he plans on dropping his first mixtape at some point this year, he says. It's just a shame that it took the circumstances we just talked about to get him this far in his career, and it's something that he has expressed a feeling of guilt over. Either way, he's still just a kid, and with a little luck, he'll still have a long way to go in life, provided he doesn't end up in a situation like his brothers and many others around him. Anyways, that's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, tap the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. As always, it's been fun rocking with y'all, man. I'm out.